They can only hide behind Mickey's ears for so long. The Sunshine State is poised to revoke Disney's longstanding cronyist anti-competitive special favors that Florida granted to the corporation nearly five decades ago. And as of yesterday, both the House and the Senate in Florida voted to end the Megacorp's special district, which has long enabled Disney to engage in activities prohibited to other private groups and individuals in the state, including Disney's competitors. Florida Republican lawmakers are kicking Walt Disney where it counts, right between the ears. And today, Governor DeSantis, just moments earlier, made it official. The Magic Kingdom is losing its abracadabra, but it didn't have to be this way. The corporate brain trust running Disney is cutting off the hands that have fed them generously for 99 years now. The children who flock to Disney movies and theme parks and wear the costumes and princess dresses they're not the ones who plunk down the big money to do so. Their parents and grandparents do, and have done so to excess over the generations. And now those parents are being told what horrible, ignorant people they are by the left and Disney in a rush to self-gratify themselves by thinking themselves as woke. Disney jumped on board that ship, not knowing that the ship they boarded so enthusiastically would turn out to be the Titanic. And the iceberg will be a governor from the state of Florida. How ironic. But the situation has led to some strange political rhetoric and bedfellows. Now the left are conveniently accusing the GOP of being anti-business. And suddenly Democrats appear to have that suddenly laissez-faire capitalist pontification on the virtues of low taxes and leaving corporations alone to manage their own affairs. Are cats sleeping with dogs? But it gets so much worse because Jen Psaki's future home, MSNBC, stooped to new lows I never thought were possible. Nicole Wallace comparing laws that protect children and parents' rights to unspeakable war crimes committed in the war in Ukraine. Dehumanization as a tactic for politics is from war. Dehumanization is a it's a it's a tactic it's being used right now. The Russians get their soldiers to rape children by dehumanizing them. Soldiers raping women and children are the same as Governor DeSantis not wanting children as young as five to be taught sexual content or letting the parents decide. Gotcha, Nicole. Way to go. Jump the shark there. And Joy Reid, who thinks we talk about the war in Ukraine too much because it involves white Europeans? Well, she brought Russia's invasion into this, too, tweeting, quote, real men fight Russian genocide. Weak men battle Disney. Oh, I see, Joy. When you see an opportunity to play the race card, you use it, saying that when the media covers the war in Ukraine story, it's racist because all those dead Ukrainians laying in the streets are mostly white. Got it. Racist. But when you invoke the Ukraine story, it's OK, because you can hit conservatives, not real men. Now, wait a minute. Who are you to talk about what is a real man or isn't Joy Reid? I mean, you are the same Joy Reid who wrote homophobic blogs a couple years ago. And then you went lower by denying those blogs. And when we further found out you were the author of those blogs, you said you were hacked, except you weren't. And when the popo caught you in another lie, Joy, hmm. So, no, I don't think we should be getting our What Real Men Do content from Joy Reid. By the way, how is that not cancelable, woke mob hypocrites? Joy Reid can be totally in-your-face homophobic and gets to keep her high-paying, lowly-rated MSNBC show? Hmm. Got it. Oh, and hey, Joy, while we're at it, real men compete against other real men in real men's sports. Weak men compete against women in women's sports. And hey, Joy, a bit of news for you. Real men do both. They can fight genocide and they can fight against wokeism that's pervading our country. And also, hey, Joy, real women can do both of those things, too. From media to teachers, so similar, by the way, in the liberal wilderness, American Federation of Teachers President Randy Weingarten warned that legislation like Florida's parental rights bill may have dire consequences. It's this notion. And look, we're, you know, we've been very lucky in America and we in some ways live in a bubble for a long time. 
This is propaganda. Yep. This is misinformation. This is the way in which wars start. This is the way in which hatred starts. Stopping a teacher from teaching a five-year-old about sex is going to start a war? That's the American Federation of Teachers Union president right there. This is how wars start, by protecting parents' rights. Why is protecting parental rights so offensive to people like that on the left? And now, Sleepy Joe has something to say, too. Joe Biden thinks Republicans are, quote, ugly for targeting Disney, saying yesterday, look what's happening down in Florida. They're going after Mickey Mouse. Mm. And then spouted some more of the Democrats' lies, saying that it's over saying gay. Isn't it embarrassing that supposed journalists, elected officials, the president of the United States, that all of them apparently don't know how to read? And the head of the teachers union, she can't read either. So they're distracting attention from the total failing of our students in math, reading, writing, and civics, as compared to almost every other top developed nation's kids' scores in the world. Sure, Bobby and Susie can't read or write, but they sure do understand what having two mommies means. What's more alarming than the illiteracy of so many is the fact that the leaders of this country and their mainstream media propagandists don't have parents' backs. They don't have the backs of our children. So Dems can't read and they want teachers to talk to your kids about their sexualized, woke agenda. And nobody showed us that more vividly or more enthusiastically than Jen Psaki this week. But the law is not about teaching sex education. It's about teaching about gender identity. And so what, what do you do if a parent or a kid, should I say a kid in one of these elementary schools, says, what about Sally? Sally has two moms. Or I'm not sure if I'm a girl or a boy. How about, hey, Sally, two plus two equals four. Worry about the sex stuff later or talk to your parents about it. It's not our job. But wait, there's more. Jen Psaki is actually crying creepy, cringy crocodile tears at the prospect of not being able to transify America's kids at their whim. This is a political wedge issue and an attempt to win a culture war. And they're doing that in a way that is harsh and cruel uh, to a community of kids, especially. I'm, I'm like going to get uh, I'm going to get emotional about this issue because I just it's horrible. But uh but, you know, it's it's like kids who are bullied and they, they, like all these leaders are, are taking steps to hurt them and hurt their lives and hurt their families. It's not about bullying. Jen, you might as just call it racist. It has nothing to do with bullying. Read the bill. It's amazing what moves Jen Psaki to tears these days. Well, we think that teachers telling students in kindergarten to th third grade about sex and gender is a form of bullying, far, far worse than bullying. A reminder that Jen Psaki had no issue at all with bullying innocent border agents without a single apology. And Jen, you know what hurts families, schools that care so much more about transgender agenda than in protecting young women from being sexually assaulted in bathrooms. Far worse. And you know what else hurts families? Poisoning young minds, young, impressionable kids who are not fully formed, being mutilated. That hurts families. It hurts families when you try to take the right of a parent away from them, take the right in their decision-making process away from them. They get to decide what sensitive sexual content they want to share with their kids. Well, Disney is quickly learning that when you pander to 5% of the population at the expense of 95% of the population, and that the left is about to find out, too. They could only hide behind Mickey's ears for so long. Disney was given actual sovereign powers. They were given carve-outs. And now the special privileges of a massive conglomerate are being stripped away. And I would have thought the left would love that. Taking down a big, rich, corporate monster. I thought the left were all about taxing the rich. But I guess that's not the case when it's Disney fighting against a bill that no one on the left seems to have read or can understand. Again, none of this had to happen. Disney chose to come out against the Parental Rights and Education Act, falsely dubbed as the Don't Say Gay Bill, by Democrats and their minions in the mainstream media. Suddenly, leftists think that a major corporation like Disney should have no rules at all, pay no taxes. Well, no, says Florida, you can't have your woke cake and eat it, too. You can't have your own government within Florida and enjoy special rights if you support taking rights away from parents. But then get this. 
Disney wasn't just getting special tax-free and jurisdiction privileges. DeSantis also says that he intends to end a special carve-out for Disney in a recently passed anti-censorship anti social media law. It's called Florida's Big Tech Bill, which passed last May. And that bill originally had a special carve-out allowing companies with theme parks, Disney, to be exempt from that law.